Hello, welcome to Steve Knows. Today, we have version 69 features that I wanted since day one. One of the best Quest 3 enhancements I have ever seen. Brilliant new games, showcases, and so much more. So I think that is enough chin-wagging. There is so much to go over. Let's get started. Today's video has a sponsor. It is a VR game from a classic and love studio, Shell Games, for their latest IP, Silent Slayer. This is a single player horror experience that strikes a great balance between being fearful, but not to the point of never wanting to play the game again or pick up the headset. You have been tasked with making your way through the vampire ranks, assassinating them. To do this, you have to silently break into their coffins, disarm all of the booby traps, and then ram a stake through their hearts. But there is a caveat. If you make too much noise or disarm something incorrectly, you will awaken that vampire and well, it's game over for you. I don't know what to do, do I go? Ah. Ah! A pretty sweet party game for new players as the concept is easy to grasp. You can also enjoy this sitting down and the performance is perfect smooth, like butter, no stutter. And you may have seen the game on this channel before because I really did enjoy the experience and they approached me and said that they would give you guys 10% off if I shared it with you. And we turned that 10 into 15% off. So use the code down below Steve Slays, which I found absolutely hilarious. I'll link everything you need to know down below if you're interested. Now starting with the good stuff, Findings of Luna in the version 69 public testing channel release, of which I do not have, sadly I did check, so I will be using reference, and I'll give a little back to them as well, thank you. This update has one of the features that I absolutely adored with the Rift Space, and for years I have craved. However, the first discovery in the headset is the volume button being used for selection. This is just a video that's been updated to educate people that you don't need to use your hands, you don't need to use your controllers, you can just use the head cursor and press the volume button to select. We also have findings in some XML strings regarding native connectivity of our Quest headsets to a Windows PC and laptop without the need for Meta Remote Desktop. This is a feature that you may have seen on the Apple Vision Pro. You can just walk up to your Mac and above it, there'll be an icon at the top that will say connect and then boom, you are connected to your laptop and you can use it in mixed reality. Streaming PC content just like that and using the MetaQuest remote application is just such a pain. So I'm not surprised to see this because the Apple Vision Pro did it and Meta seemed to be mimicking some of the features that they had. But this is fantastic because as I said, the pain, the process at the moment is so painful to do this. Now the greatest feature is the ability to pin windows. If you remember on the Rift Home, you could pin a window and I used to use this when I live streamed so I can have a chat window up whilst I was playing. It would persist when I entered any of my VR experiences, meaning that I was able to interact with you still reading the chat during the live stream because I could see it. Or you could watch content whilst playing a game. Perhaps you have a tutorial up because you're stuck on a puzzler or a YouTube podcast on. Maybe your Deliveroo tracking information has been pinned. So Luna showcased this by playing a level of Pavlov and was able to play Sword Art Online whilst taking out targets. And I just thought you could stream snipe people with this, couldn't you? Meta are calling this feature seamless multitasking, which means you can work and play. I'm working, honest, honest. I thought this was so darn cool. It's like taking the experience where you were able to play your own music on Xbox all those years ago whilst playing a game to the next level, to the VR medium. There is also an additional setting added where you can turn on or off the spatial audio, which in VR, I don't know why you would not have that on. Perhaps you're viewing media in bed, but definitely doesn't work when you're playing a game. I hear shooting, where's it coming from? I don't know, I'm in mono. Next, a shout out to Specular or Specular for making something spectacular. Showing off a custom shader they had made running natively on the Quest 3 at 72 FPS with no post-processing. And this water looks so wet and so tasty like you could drink it, including the wetness and detail of the rock it's interacting with. There's also a SpongeBob Island in the background. I thought it would have made it if they had a little Patrick or Sandy on that beach. But seeing this sort of clarity and motion of water in a VR experience that's running natively on Quest was just breathtaking. Not because I was drowning. Next, for those of you that like to play the best versions of experiences available on Quest, there is a game that got a Quest 3 enhancement and it has made such a difference. So Medieval Dynasty just got a 90 hertz update and a Quest 3 update. This is a sandbox RPG where you have to manage a settlement and cause it to thrive. And it didn't exactly help when you looked around your settlement looked like literal sh**. 
So in the equestrian enhancement, you can see the detailing on the trees, the grass, the draw distance, the anti-aliasing improvements, the tree bark, the new shadows that they have added, there's new assets, a new skybox, shiny metal objects. They have gone to absolute town on this improvement, and it's one of the biggest quest three enhancements I've ever seen. Do you know any more that would top this? Because it's night and day different. This is like a generational leap. Well, obviously, it was Quest 2 to Quest 3, but you know what I mean. Next, we have the Binary Mill teasing a new game that they're releasing, and you may know them from titles like Rush, Gun Club VR, Resist, all games that during their time impressed the community. So I have absolute confidence that Binary Mill will bring us something fun once again. But this game is called Into Black, coming this October 2024. And I just, I keep wanting to say Into the Black, but it's Into Black. This is a sci-fi action adventure title where you can play alone or with friends. It has a fully voiced story driven campaign. And in the trailer, we can see item management, power ups, health upgrades, a flashlight. So I suspect some creepy moments in this game, especially because it is called Into Black. There's also weaponry. I see some hand-to-hand -hand combat, or is it a pickaxe? I don't know yet. There should be an announcement during a VR showcase that is coming soon. But the trailer has pulled me in, and the bit that got me was definitely the running through the tunnel with a flashlight on. That just looked so good. But not zero. Run! Now it's time for the quick fire news, some short stories that I thought were nice to know, um, and a, a sad one first. Uh, Meta just confirmed in an internal memo that Ready at Dawn, the studio, has been shut down. So it wasn't just the removal of Echo Arena from the platform, but the studio behind many VR staples and experiences that almost defined an error for the medium. They are no more. I don't get it. Like, I, I don't get it. Something to get excited for though, a VR showcase is coming on the 15th of August where we will get to see some gameplay footage for Hitman 3 Reloaded on Quest at last, plus 14 other game releases and new announcements, and something to be excited for are VR ports being announced from the flat to vr community, so a very exciting one. I may stream it if you're interested in hanging out, let me know. Next is an update from a great cooperative dungeon crawler, Dungeons of Eternity. They have added an arachnophobia mode to remove the spiders from the game. And at first I thought, why? But I reflected back and when I think of all of the newbies that played VR and they had titles with creepy crawlies in them, they absolutely screamed their head off. It was too scary for them. So I guess it's a smart move. So spiders, they're gone. Instead, we have these weird things. I don't even know what they're called, but they explode. And a little tip, since there's lots of PlayStation VR adapter hype, it turns out you don't even need the adapter if you've got a 20 series GPU from Nvidia and an AMD 6000 series GPU because they have a virtual link adapter. This is a little USB-C port on the back of your GPU. It didn't last very long. It's not on the newer models, but it means you can plug the headset directly into the PC and this port supports the display port, USB and up to 27 watts of power all in one connection. So save your money. And if you're new to VR, you've got a PlayStation VR 2 and you wanted to get into PC VR, look for an AMD 6000 or an RTX 20 series card or PC build second hand because I'm sure you'll get one cheap right now and boom, you're good to go for PC VR. So that's it from me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope there was something here for you to get excited for and hopefully you learned something new as well. Please consider giving me a subscribe. It really means a lot and I hope you have a great week. Happy gaming, guys. Good day. Hi, Lubos!